Yeah. So we tell people, check your fasting. Check another time of day, but vary that time of day, just like what Louise was saying. So one day you might do pre-breakfast and post-breakfast. The next day you might do that fasting pre-breakfast, and you might do before lunch. And then another day before dinner. By the end of two weeks, if you bear those signs, you should see a picture. You should see a pattern. If you're not seeing a pattern, guess where the next place we look at is? <coughs> Make a guess. Mm -hmm. Eating. So we're looking at the carbohydrate foods. So how many of you know what the carb foods are? Yes. I was told anything that's white. You know, that might be a very good start, but it's a little too simplified because we do have some white things that have carbs that are okay. We got milk. I know potato has a bad name. Rice has a bad name. Yes. <laughs> so let's take a look at what the carbs are. Now, this, this piece of information, there's a lot, but this is very valuable. So it's called healthy eating, and we have the carb foods. So the carb foods are going to be milk and yogurt, fruit, rice, potato, bread, cereal. Anybody know the starchy um, veggies? Corn, peas. Good tasty ones. Yeah, but they get a bad name. A lot of times you think, oh, I can't have that. Because there really isn't any food you can't have. It's all based on moderation. portion and moderation. Yeah, you're right. And on the back, these, uh, there's more detail about these foods. And then in this little tiny corner, we have sweets and chips. So what are your thoughts about sweets and chips? Yummy. <laughs> Moderation. moderation. Right, right, right. In the old days, people had diabetes, they weren't supposed to have any. So you can make a guess at what these portions of sweets and chips are going to be nowadays. Right? And as you said, small, and then you got to figure out, all right, well, the sweets and chips, what's, what's a reasonable amount to have in a day? I love this question. For sweets and chips. You know, if you had a, two little cookies, if you had a handful of chips, half a cup of ice cream, how many a day? For me, none. I can't have any. Yeah, we, we try to go like once a week. Okay, okay. Because when we do classes, we have people that say, absolutely not, we shouldn't have any. Some people might say one, but somehow I don't know that that's how Americans are eating. Because <laughs> if that was happening, we'd have a lot of companies going out of business. But it's looking at what's a meal, what's a snack. And at, now, do you all have that uh, plate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody have one of those? Does anybody need it? Because what's going to constitute a meal? It's also an inside your VA pack too. It's a little bit different, I think. But is it? Yes, she's got. Uh, you have. You came in. Yeah. You have it. Okay. I'm sorry. Thanks. Now on this, if you turn this healthy eating over, it says a meal is going to be between two and four carb choices. Because people will look at the carb choices and they'll go, a third of a cup of rice, I'm going to starve. Nobody eats a third of a cup of rice. But are we recommending a third of a cup of rice at a meal? No, because it's two to four. So it's two-thirds of a cup, three-thirds of a cup would be a full cup. So, and the, the thing that I think to keep in mind is that healthy eating for diabetes 
is really healthy eating for anyone. Anyone, everyone. And these are the ways that families can eat too. So then, um, two carb choices. And then as we say, what constitutes a meal? Because I think sometimes people are saying, they, I don't know how to eat these days. What's a good breakfast? What's a good lunch? What's a good dinner? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Oatmeal? Okay, so how much oatmeal? Um, well, I usually have, I have the uh, oatmeal that you have to cook. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, let's go to oatmeal. We have hot cereal in the middle here. So half a cup cooked is one, full cup is two. Half a banana. Go down to fruit. Half a banana is there. That's three. So does that work? For me, it does for a couple hours. Oh, but one, two, three. That's, that fits between two and four. Now, when we individualize this, we tighten it up so it doesn't vary more than one carb. What are some other breakfasts? Now, that one didn't really have, have protein, but if you're doing okay, that's okay. Sometimes people prefer or find that their blood sugars are better if they have a little protein, so they might have a little peanut butter, they might have a little bit of low-fat cheese, they might have an egg. Eggs, three to six per week is the guideline. Are you allowed to eat the whole egg? Three to six per week. We did, we did a, um, a research study. Because a lot of times you'll see three per week. And then um, one of our physicians read something that eggs could be unlimited. And I said, well, I don't, I, I don't know. I just can't say that. I think we have to do a library search. Because he was saying it was the type of cholesterol that's in the egg. So anyway. We had the librarian do a full search, and what we came out with, the best guidelines would be between three and six in a week. And if you're concerned about the cholesterol, you can go to egg sub. You can do two whites and one yolk. Yeah. We kind of base it on, on our day. If we're going to figure on a snack at 1030, then we'll have one egg, one piece toast, and some fruit. If, if it's going to, we're not going to eat until lunch, then we'll have two eggs, and, and we use this 45 calorie bread. Oh, so basically two slices would equal one carb choice. Now see, if you look here on the bottom, I put this little chart of the numbers. So one carb choice is 15 grams. So you're saying one slice? One egg and then one, uh, one slice of toast. Okay. 45 calories right now. Okay, so it's 45 calories. Then the two would be 80, and you can see that... Um, that would fit into this starch group, and so that would be one carb choice. So with the light bread, diet bread, two pieces would equal a regular piece of bread. And half a pizza. Excuse me? And half a pizza. <laughs> pizza's a tough one. Why is pizza so difficult? Well, part of it, if you look at, there are, this is if you look at, um, this is a, um, really getting kind of technical about foods. There's certain foods it's relatively easy to stop eating. And if we looked at this, we've got a whole grain, we've got a protein, and then we've got two types of veg. And even if that was a baked potato or a sweet potato, there's a lot of chew and a lot of crunch, and people become satisfied. You have something soft and warm and no chew. I think we eat more than when we realize that we're satisfied. And not, and then it's like, this, if it's about this big, um, compared to pieces of bread. So a small piece and then with that crust on the back and then the tomato sauce, that's easily two carb choices. So it uses up the carbs pretty fast, even if you're aiming for four. So it, um, pizza probably needs some salad with it. Another guideline, what's the guideline for alcohol for people with diabetes and for everybody actually? 
for women it's one per day, for men it's two per day, and you can't borrow from other days. <laughs> Come on. I drink to forget my car count. Sorry? I drink to forget my car count. I apologize, I have to go to work. Okay, bye-bye. You can't, alcohol, you have to be very aware because it can cause a low blood sugar. What happens is it ties up the liver and the liver isn't available to, to put out some fuel. So you don't want to have alcohol on an empty stomach. You want to make sure that you have some carb with it. And it's preferable to have it with a meal. But if you are at a cocktail party or something like that and you're having a little bit of wine, then make sure you have some crackers or you have something that has carbs. Otherwise, you could have a low. All right, so the pizza. Pizza is a tough one. What else is a tough one in terms of carbs? Uh, bagel. Bagel. All right. How many ounces do you think the average bagel is? And this, I think they're growing all the time. It used to be like equal to five pieces of bread. You go to Dunkin' Donuts, it's easy five, six pieces of bread. But that's true for the muffin, too. Yeah, the muffins are horrible. All right? So the question is, can people have half? Some people say yes, some people say it's impossible. So you have to figure out, are you gonna share it with somebody? Are you gonna to go to the grocery store and buy the Thomas's where you can get a 22 gram one, so it's one and a half? So there's options out there, but just being aware. What are some other um, carb foods that are, are hard? They're just their nature makes them hard. Plates of spaghetti. Um, the whole thing about fiber, fiber will slow down the blood sugar from going up quick, but it's not going to do the whole job. So it's preferable, it's always preferable to have something with fiber, but it's not going to do the whole job. You still have to measure yourself to know that it's going to be, um, yeah. it's going to raise the blood sugar. So it still makes it, if you're having four carbs, that's a cup and a quarter. Now what's interesting is, if, if you look here for casserole type foods, that's um, chili, mac and cheese, lasagna, half a cup is one carb. So you, for four carbs, you could have two cups. And somehow I think that'll be a little more satisfying then the plate of spaghetti that just has a whole lot of sauce that could end up to, yeah, 10, 12 carb choices easy. And there's the opportunity to check your blood two hours after and just see what's going on. We, we've tried this um, thing, it's a spaghetti squash. I don't oh, know spaghetti you know. squash, yes. It's fabulous. Yeah. Um, I first learned about it years ago when my daughter had some allergies. It's a veg. So take everything away, yep. so we had like uh, pasta at the point, and so we used that. Yep, it's and people so tend to delicious. like that, yep, people like that. Um, what are some other carbs that are potatoes, huh? especially Potatoes, especially when you like your meat, potato, vegetable. Mm -hmm. Potatoes are bad. Well, how I find it. It's hard because you just don't want this to couple on that sandwich. Okay, so that brings us to the, the thought of if you have a baked potato, you have automatic portion control. So if you have one about the size of a cup, even if it's bigger than a cup, it's only going to be three carb choices. Do you pull out a measuring cup or do you have a serving spoon that you know what it equals? And a cup of mashed potatoes is really quite a bit. Anybody measured a cup yeah, of mashed potatoes? It, it, it ends up looking more than what you think it's going to look like. And then, but well, you've got four, so maybe a cup and a half. Sweet potato. Now, the white potato's gotten a really bad name versus the sweet potato, right? Because people, see, it's that white food that people say, oh, I absolutely can't have. That's not so. It's all keeping track. Now, the sweet potato might have a little more fiber. It's going to have some vitamin A. But if you look at the studies of the glycemic index, where they do an average, there isn't a whole lot of difference. And the thing of it is, if you are thinking that this is happening, 
have a sweet potato. Check your blood two hours after. Keep everything else the same. Next time have white potato, check two hours after, see what the difference is. Because the people that we talk to, that's true for the, um, the wheat spaghetti, the brown rice, um, and the, the sweet potato. It'll help some, but it's not gonna do the whole job. You still have to be aware of what you're measuring. Or measure and then eyeball. Those sorts of things. So the sandwiches, are they a tough one? Yes. A six inch stuff is equal to two sandwiches. How many people eat two sandwiches at lunch? And a lot of people have the 12 inch. Not anymore. No. <laughs> I know. When, when I write, when I, uh, when, I, when I write meal plans for people, and I always negotiate, and so sometimes we'll have somebody from EB, and they go out to the truck, and they get a 12-inch. And the best we can do is whatever that sub is, they'll have one at one break, and they'll have one at lunch. So they divide it up, and, and the nurse practitioner says to me, I always know when you've negotiated, because there's that old grinder, but at least we've broken it up. Yeah. But there's, see, there's something about a sub. It's way easier to eat than two or four sandwiches. So that's why looking at the nature of some of these foods and start to work with the ones that are easier for you. And then if you, um, what about if you, if you did have a sub or spaghetti, what if you took a walk afterwards? And then once again, that meter, how, ma how many of you really value your meter as a, a, a tool that gives you good information? Yeah, because anytime we're on exercise, you want to check your blood before. And if you're less than 100, you always need to add a carb. And when you finish, you need to check your blood. And if you're less than 100, you always need to add a carb. So be, be cautious around exercise. And if you're out walking, Glucose tabs. How many people have glucose tabs in their pocket right now? Yay! <coughs> Why do you need glucose tabs? Nobody plans on a low blood sugar. It only takes once, and Louise was saying about driving? That's happened to me. I got in a car accident. You know, and there's things that a lot of times people, they're just so used to their routine they don't really think about. Go to the gym. Drive home, check your blood. What's wrong with that story? It should be, go to the gym, check your blood, see that it's okay. Because, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, driving, and you know, people sometimes the office will think you're drunk. So if you have one of those wallet ID cards, and I have them at work if someone wants to call, I suggest that people put it like by their visor or somewhere on their dashboard. Oh, what a good idea! They're not always going to look in your pocket. Right, 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 right. But if they see that I have diabetes, blah blah blah, then they may think, "Oh my God, this person's having a reaction." Versus they've been drinking and have the accident because of that. Right. I had it when I was driving. I was just had insulin for a very short time, and I was driving, and my blood sugar, I guess, was low, and I got to drive. Oh, well. Roll into a ditch, and the policeman you know, thought I was drinking. It wasn't yeah, true. Yeah, it's a free and they order. also they also took my license away. Mm -hmm. Now these days, getting a license back after a low blood sugar really takes a lot, and you have to bring in your logs and yeah. you you have to have letters. So it's it's really a big deal. So any and then. Now, it's recommended that you always have glucose tabs, that you always have your meter with you. What if you didn't and you thought you might be low? You have symptoms of shaking. Air on the side Suddenly of Suddenly shake. Yeah. Air on the side of washing. Right, exactly. So if you have a one or two carb snack, it's not going to hurt you. And what might a one or two carb snack be? I have a small piece of candy. Mm, that, that. A little. Yeah, that would. A two carb is like um, the packages of crackers that are um, have six in there. Now I'm not saying it's the perfect snack, but non-perishable, 
travels anywhere, um, is not susceptible to heat or cold, and you can get little Tupperware, some kind of little plastic container to put it in, won't take up much room, and it won't get all smashed up. But you need to have something with you. Granola, I like something that has a little bit of protein in it as opposed to a granola bar or one of those things, but they too would work. And then um, after you, you know the 15-15 rule? That means if you think you have a low blood sugar, you check. If you're less than 70, then you have 15 grams of carb. And that's where the four ounces of orange juice comes in, four ounces of regular soda, or four glucose tabs. So if you're less than 70, then you wait 15 minutes. So it's 15 grams, wait 15 minutes. And if you're then at 70, then you either go ahead and have a small snack, or if it's time to eat, go ahead and eat. Ever have a lot of people tell me that but it only takes once and that's what we're concerned about and it also depends on what medication people are on if you're on no medication you're not at risk if you're on metformin and you're on a metformin and a glucophage you're at really low risk and you have to be on some of the the other oral meds or insulin to be more susceptible okay all right, so back to the meals. So we were on reasonable breakfast. Okay, what did you used to eat when you were young? What did your mom want you to eat? Donuts. Oh. Sometimes pancakes. Oh yeah, we had donuts, fried dough. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of times, moms usually prefer the healthy cereals and the, you know, or the, the whole grain toast and a little peanut butter or that sort of thing. And then, what's a, what's a good lunch? What's a reasonable lunch? Well, guess what the most common things people are having for lunch? Sandwiches? Sandwiches, yeah. Soup, salad, or leftovers. That pretty much covers everything. So how are you gonna make sure you get the right number of carbs with these? Because you pick out your carb. If you have a sandwich, you have two. No, is two gonna hold you through the afternoon? I'm gonna do meals first, then we'll go back to snacks. So you might need a piece of fruit, you might need a glass of milk. Sometimes you might have a handful of chips. Now a bag with a handful of chips these days is hard to find, have you noticed? Yeah, even the, the so to get the handful of chips I think you have to buy it in a big plastic. So you find somebody to share it with or throw it away or... Um, we, we buy like the big bag of chips and force them out. That's a good Maybe idea. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And for people who are able to manage that, some people tell me they have trouble with that. But so if you can prepack your own, um, share it with somebody, save it for later. I know people hate to throw away food, but is it more of a problem for you? when you have too much chips? Right? So that's the sandwich. Um, the salad, how are you gonna get your carb if you have a salad? Because no meal should be carb free. Chicken is a protein, and that would be nice, nice to have some protein. But what's a carb with salad? So how much croutons would be a carb? Somewhere between half a cup, three quarters of a cup, and that's kind of a lot. Of, okay, so we, we, have, we have almost one. Soup would go with salad. One cup of soup is a carb. What else? When you're doing the salads, if you're doing the vegetables, are they not the kind of carbs? They're free. We count those as free. I know you will see some sources that say you have to count every half cup or a whole cup uncooked. 
People don't have high blood sugars because of free vegetables. So you don't have to worry about that. If you had chickpeas in the salad. I'm sorry? It's a protein and a carb. It's one carb and it counts as like one ounce of meat. All right. Um, if you had some crackers, six crackers, if you had a piece of bread. But to get to that, if we said women are going to usually be two to three at a meal and men are usually going to be three to four at a meal. If, and that really is based on what people say they want their weight to be and to make it work. So to get three, sometimes for a salad, people are going, oh, I don't have enough. But what do you see at these salad bars? Because you'll see potato salad, you'll see macaroni salad. So the way that you do that, half a cup of potato salad is going to be a carb, but you might not want half a cup. So you kind of do an estimate. And if you have a, just a little potato salad, a little macaroni salad, that might equal one. Right? So you kind of add it up as you go through. And when you're trying to add at a buffet or a salad bar, it's easier to do the one-digit carb. So it's like, okay, this, this, and this, that's one carb. This, this, and this, two carb. Because otherwise, I don't know exactly how people do it, and if it's too hard, they're not going to do it. So it's got to be easy. Um, let's see, so we did salad, we did sandwich. <coughs> soup, so if soup is, one cup is a carb, two cups are going to be two, and so what's, what's the, what would be a third carb? If, if we just work with three, that's kind of a midpoint for everybody. Crackers. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Then the other thing that people have um, is the leftovers. And in some ways, that can be nice because as, as long as you're keeping track of the amounts. <coughs> and sometimes that, that extra protein that they cook at dinner can be for that leftover or even made into a sandwich, and that can be helpful. Because deli meats, although they're, some of them you can get low fat, what can you not get with these deli meats? You look at those numbers and it's whoo. All right? So if you do cook a little extra protein at dinner, it can help at lunch. Right? Um, anything else that would be good at lunch? Beverages. What are you going to have for beverages? Water. Okay. Anybody having milk with meals? Only breakfast. How many people have three, two, four, either light yogurt or one percent or fat-free milk? If not, look into a calcium supplement. Okay. All right. So there's lunch, and then what about dinner? So um, your protein, so no carb there. Free vegetable, that's a good idea. How's it going getting half, half a plate of free veggies? Hard. It's hard. hard. It's if you notice here, they had in two different kinds. I think that helps. That helps a whole lot. And salad is relatively easy, and most people like a salad. And then if you had the other one be a free vegetable. So what about the starch at dinner? What ones are you going to pick? OK, baked potatoes. You have something about the size of a cup. There's two. Could be sweet potato. Half cup corn, half cup peas. If you have those mixed vegetables, that has the carrots and the green beans with the corn and the peas, you get a whole cup. So that's kind of a deal. Oh, we could have a slice of bread. But is this something you're used to? Is it new to you that you're thinking of one, two, three? Because once you get in the habit of it. I'm surprised at the number of carbs that you're saying to have. Well. 
Um, what do you think your, uh, your total carb intake is for the day? I try to keep it really low. Like how low? Well, like the one slice of bread at breakfast. Okay, so that's I low carb, that. that's low, and so that's half a carb. And a yogurt. Okay, one and a half. Okay, so how much potato? Um, a very small one. Oh, half cup? Yeah. Okay, so we're at two and a half. And, and I try to keep the carbs really low. We thought we had to keep the carbs really low. That's why I'm saying I'm surprised. The free carbs, you know, all the veggies that, that don't have, with, with no peas, no Yeah. Uh, oh, and I can, I can see why that happens. I can see why that happens. And I love this this this. Um, subject. All right, so two and a half, we'll round it to three, that's 45 grams in a day. The American Diabetes Association states that you need a minimum of 130 grams of carb a day for your brain and your nervous system to function adequately. Stretched out through the day, so that's like seven or eight carbs, all right? So it's not all that much because if you did two, 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 there's six, and then we're talking one more for a snack, or two, two, three, but just keep it in mind. Our goal is not to be carb free. Now, if, if you're um, concerned, then, um, I mean, you can always pick the healthier carbs because the one thing with this sheet, this is a, this is a good sheet, number one, you can get whole grain, and it's not, these foods don't have any fat, so they're healthy foods. Number two is the fruits. You can have a good fiber, good vitamin A, vitamin C. With the milk, um, you, lo, low fat or fat free, good calcium, good vitamin D, some protein, and then the free vegetables. So everything of, of, um, above that number four it's good, healthy stuff, but I think sometimes people are afraid of those foods because we can't have white potato, and then <clears throat> we get concerned about rice, and then we worry about corn or peas, and then if we can get rid of the calories for milk, we can have something else. So pretty soon we've nudged down all our healthy foods, and we're almost fearful of them, now, number four is a whole different situation. But we want to keep this real healthy and choose a variety of foods. Yes? Um, so I'm very, very new to this because I was just diagnosed with pre-diabetic. So it's a whole new world for me. I thought because low-fat yogurt, so I went through out everything, low-fat yogurt, if it has any kinds of grams of sugar or six uh -huh. grams of sugar, then I need to throw <coughs> it away. Great question. All right. When you look at a label, you're going to look at the serving size just to make sure whatever one is. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to go down and you're going to find the total carbohydrate. And then you're going to compare it to this. This. All right. Don't even look at that sugar. The sugar is included in the total carb, so you don't have to worry about that. Plus, it's a healthy sugar because it's lactose, it's a milk sugar, and that's just the nature of what milk is. Mm -hmm. So that, that sugar is, isn't a problem. And if it's light, and you want the yogurt to be about 22 grams or less. So if it's, uh, if it's, if it's in the 40s, the you know some white stuff or sweet stuff has been added. So if it's like light and lively, low-fat yogurt, yeah. fat-free. Yeah, tea, yeah. Even the Greek yogurts. It, you can eat it. Yeah. So that's good to know. But, I do a lot but of stuff. everything you all have said is a very logical <laughs> decision based on what you hear. Because there's a whole lot of myths out there, right? I think one of these up here as far as misconceptions, that you can't have any you can't have any sugar. And that or that you could have just a touch of sugar. <laughs> Now, nowadays we call that pre-diabetes. Mm -hmm. So when when you have um, a lab done and you're less, you're 99 or less, that's no diabetes. If you're 100 to 125, that's pre-diabetes. 126 is diabetes. Pre-diabetes, unfortunately, is like the orphan. Pre-diabetes, 
really is almost diabetes, and, and it's managed exactly the same way as you do diabetes. And so most people will be diet and exercise, and there's some physicians that'll put people on metformin, the glucophage, because it can help protect the beta cells in the pancreas and make it last longer, help your pancreas put out insulin longer. But, um, and it, we will see a time that um, the insurance co companies are going to cover. Mm -hmm. But if you have the if you have the diagnosis of impaired fasting glucose, it is covered under medical nutritional therapy. Because we're start, we're starting to do that at the diabetes center yep. for the impaired fasting glucose. Yes. Now I we haven't I haven't really seen it officially, but we looked it up. So if you have prediabetes, you should be covered from um, medical nutritional therapy. And then, all right, so um, the task with prediabetes is you want to fend off the diagnosis of diabetes for as long as you can. So I can tell you, if you get the diagnosis of prediabetes, you start making different decisions. You start counting crackers. You start saying, oh, I can have this much carb, but I don't want to have this much carb. But you're really looking at diet and exercise, and you're looking at stretching those carbs out. And then as far as diabetes, this is it. So um, back to the food, and then we'll move on with this. What about snacks? Does everybody who has diabetes need snacks? No. That's a carryover from the old days. I think in the old days they didn't really diagnose prediabetes. And in the old days they had oral meds that if you got a low blood sugar, it lasted for the longest, longest time and they had trouble pulling people out of it. So it's very logical. Plus it can be a healthy way of eating. But it became that everybody needed it. Not so. It's you need the three meals, and then it's individualized whether you're going to have a snack. Some of the insulins are not made for snacks, but even on those insulins, we can, once we individualize it for the person, we can figure out how much insulin they need for a snack. But they have to keep records, and we've got to work on it. So what are your thoughts about snacks? <laughs> and if you can fit them in, there's no problem. Right? What, what's the most popular snack? The evening yeah, snack. Chocolate. Oh, chocolate. The evening snack and chocolate, yeah. Now, how many of you, the evening snack would be the most important? No? Yes? And if your meals are adequate, then your snacks hopefully will not be. I'm two sure Oreos. Because I can't speak if I'm hungry and eat the chocolate. There it is. <laughs> I picked out things that everybody knew. So two Oreos is a carb choice. And it's different from a piece of bread because it's got fat. So two Oreos is like a piece of white bread with, uh, say, like a pat and half a margarine on it. No margarine, ever. Who said no margarine? Did you read the article about how bad it is for you? <laughs> for years and years and years. Butter is a saturated fat. If you're going to have butter, it's yeah. limited to two teaspoons in a day, which unfortunately is not a lot for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But that is the amount of saturated fat from butter that's recommended based on your healthy guidelines for good eating. Yeah. It's not that you can't have it, it's just small. And the margarines have a lot of the hard, healthy oils. I was thinking, you know, people think that fruit, and fruit is good for you, right? But I think sometimes folks, um, in thinking they're eating a healthy snack, overdose on fruit. Oh. So you might imagine that. And where did that happen that it became a big, 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 big deal? Mm -hmm. Weight Watchers had free fruit. Now, old-fashioned Weight Watchers is very much like a meal plan like this. Then they moved into the point system, we could still make it work as far as for diabetes. But when you start having fruit as free, we have to say to people, 
you need to follow your meal plan. You go to the meetings and you can make friends and you can get all the good information. You get the support. But you need those cards. And fruit is not free. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's, there's one free fruit. Guess what it is? Oh! I hadn't thought of lemon. Because people don't usually eat. Um, the one I'm thinking of is rhubarb. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, the strawberries too. but it can be artificially sweetened. Yeah. But um, strawberries. If you look on this chart, melon and strawberries are a deal because you get a full cup mm -hmm. for one carb, whereas most of the other fruits you get half a cup. And they're good. Mm -hmm. I had a gentleman, an older fellow, call me one day at work and couldn't understand why his blood sugars were just not doing well. And I follow my, you know, my diet and all this good stuff. And he was telling me what he was eating and whatnot. So then he said, of course I eat my fruit. So I said, to him, so how much fruit? And it was in the good weather where the fruit was, you know, being yep, yep. whatever. So he says, oh, I can, you know, do about six oranges a day. So I went, oh, wow. So he, in his mind, and, you know, I'm not blaming him, but he, you know, fruit is supposed to be good for you and healthy. Didn't take into consideration all that natural sugar that was right, right. Him. So a small so orange is 15 grams, and there, there aren't that many small oranges around you. It's like a tangerine or something like that. Sometimes people will say they're afraid of orange juice, and guess what? That might be two reasons. Well, half, half, half a cup is 15 grams. And of course, there is a recommendation to have the whole piece of fruit instead of have the whole fruit instead of um, the juice that, for fiber and all that. But because juice is used to treat a low, that sometimes people think they can't have it on their meal plan. And somebody absolutely loves it. Well, then get your fiber and your veggies, other fruit, whole grains, and it's it's not a not not. Big glasses of juice, like some juice lovers like, but orange juice is one of those foods. Sometimes it's a plain old food on a meal plan, and sometimes it has a therapeutic use to treat a low, and those are totally different, and what you use to treat a low is not part of your meal plan. And if you do get lows, then we've got to figure out what's going on and why they're happening. Okay, anything else about, oh, well, snacks. If you have a snack, can you keep it between one and two carb choices? Popcorn. Popcorn, popcorn. three cups is one carb. With no butter or anything on it, right? Just plain. It really popcorn. depends how much fats you've used. See, if you go to this fat category down here, mm -hmm. there are four to six of those you can have in a day. Women, again, will be closer to four to five. And, um, men would be probably closer to five to six. So you can use that. Now with this sheet, if you have lean meats and you keep it between five and eight ounces, and you're not adding too much fats, so the meat has to be lean, the milk has to be 1% or fat free, and only two of the saturated fats. And if that's followed, then this is also a heart healthy diet. Because we can't forget heart healthy. Why can't we forget heart healthy? Blood vessels are affected by diabetes. Absolutely. People who have diabetes are affected by strokes and heart attacks, big time. And um, I, we, I have a quote from one of the dietitians, Ellie Kamau. Oh, yeah, I know. And she has a big family history of diabetes. What she said was, high blood sugars are very inconvenient. Managing diabetes can be inconvenient, and, but it's a stroke or a heart attack that can take you down and really change your life. And one of my biggest disappointments was that um, Dick Clark was just beginning to be a spokesperson for diabetes. To have people be aware, you'll be real prone to a heart, heart attack or stroke, and then it happened to him. So that's so unfortunate, but we really need to be aware. They go hand in hand. 
When you get a diagnosis of diabetes, another quote, Dr. Corvetta said, it's like you get a little package. And in that package comes hyperlipidemia or dyslipidemia, so you got cholesterol and triglyceride problems, hypertension, and the diabetes. So that they, they don't, it's not like it's all separate. If you're at the newer stages, maybe not. The hardest thing to talk about with diabetes, <clears throat> it's hard for me to say, it's hard for you to hear, is that it's a progressive disease. So what you're doing at year one perhaps would be diet and exercise. Maybe by year two, three, four, five, you might need a medication. And through time, the medications may change. Because people always will ask me, can I manage it always, always, always with diet and exercise? And I don't even know how many thousands of people we have at the Diabetes Center in New London. And we have, <coughs> Let's see, maybe like, I know one woman who manages with diet and exercise in her 80s, and she's exercising a lot. She's exercising a lot. Because she, she just doesn't want to add that med. What's different about some of the meds today is that they can have a protective mechanism. In the old days, they were just therapeutic. Now, we're saying, okay, metformin, that can protect your beta cells. Because people will come in and say, Oh, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to exercise, I'm going to do my carbs, and I want to get off all my meds. Well, why would you want to get off metformin? Because that's going to protect your beta cells. Plus, it can help with cancer. Plus, some of the um, blood pressure meds can help prevent kidney disease. So meds are not the meds of the old days. You have to have lab tests? Yes. Yeah. Your doctors have to monitor you. But if you have diabetes, how often should you be going to your doctor? Every three months. Uh, every three months. Yes. No more than yeah. Three months. And you need, there's certain labs that you need to have. Um, the A1C would be three months. <coughs> there's certain yearly things that have to be done. The blood pressure check should be done all the time that you're there. So being aware. And then when, you get, when the decision is made to jump from the primary care physician to an endocrinologist or a formal diabetes education program. And once you have an endocrinologist or a, a diabetes specialist, then they manage the diabetes and the PCP manages everything else. Yeah, because we don't want too many people changing diabetes meds. Okay, so she's saying her doctor has her check in seven times a day. Yeah, which meals two hours after. All right, and that makes, and what medication are you on? You're on? I'm on Jamie Med. All right, any insulin? Yes, I'm on Humalog and Lantus. Okay, Humalog and Lantus. So the type of um, insulin that she's on, it's good to know a, a pre meal and a post meal to make sure things are going well and then a bedtime, and then you may need some extra strips in case you might have a low. So a lot of times, how far your diabetes has progressed determines how often you're going to check, and the medication you're on determines how often you're going to check. Bye, Louise. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. So that will determine. <laughs> so there's a message here that it's, your, your treatment plan needs to be individualized. That's real, your meal plan, your medication, maybe even your walking program or whatever kind of exercise and you want to get clearance from your physician. What else? Because every number is going to tell you food, exercise, amount of insulin that's either put out by your body, enhanced by an oral med, or um, injected. So you have to be aware of those things. Anything else on food? Excuse me? An apple. Again, a small apple would count as one carb choice, 15 grams. An average apple, you're going to count as two. 
So if it's for a snack or part of a meal? To eat an apple before you eat. Well, it, anything that has fiber will help. It helps your GI tract. Okay, so we did eating. We did a little bit about monitoring. We've done a little bit about medication. Exercise. How much exercise are people supposed to get in a week? Uh, maybe walking three times a day for at least 20 minutes. Wow. The guidelines are 150 minutes a week. Yeah. So it's like five days, half an hour, or, um, you know, six days, do 20 minutes, and... And the, oh, the other guideline is don't go two days without exercise. But you need to be cleared by your physician. Big time, gotta be cleared. Make sure everything's okay. Then we have looking at the risk factors. What are the risk factors of diabetes? Your eyes, your opposite. Kidneys? Kidneys? Yeah. The bad thing is, now say if somebody has high blood sugars, the sugar isn't going into the cells it needs to go into to make fuel for you. Unfortunately, your eyes and your nerve cells can still absorb that sugar and can cause major problems. That's an awful fact. That's why you want the blood sugars to be in a good range. High blood sugars for a long time as far as the kidneys. Um, you have little filtering units in your kidney they're like little screens. Subjected to high amounts of sugar, the screen gets bigger squares and protein can go through. So once a year you want to have a test called microalbuminuria to see that's a small amount of protein in your in your urine and that can be monitored and there can be medi there can be medication and you want to keep it micro. You don't want it to go macro. Because you go through micro and macro before you get to kidney disease. So there's stages. And, and you want to you want to catch this early, <coughs> anything. So we did eyes. We did blood vessels and heart disease, neuropathy. Neuropathy usually starts in the toes. And it's bilateral. And feet primarily, and, and less often, yeah. How about <coughs> Good dental care. Sometimes it's a dentist that um, will um, find out that somebody has diabetes and send them. Well, because there's an aspect of that whole sugar, and sugar isn't good for our teeth and our gums. So really good dental care. Brushing and flossing and rinsing and all that. And even if you can rinse with water. Even if, um, my dentist said, even if you brush with a dry brush, if you're out. You know, and they have these little compact ones you can take everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good dental care, and then floss. And everybody flosses really good, like two weeks before they do their six month checkup, <laughs> right? <laughs> so you don't suffer. Okay. And then the one thing that isn't on here is problem solving. Figuring out, what am I going to do? I got a problem. How am I going to solve it? And it goes from figuring out what you're going to eat when, wh what kind of exercise am I going to do, when am I going to do it, who am I going to do it with, how often am I going to check my blood, what am I going to do about my meds. But if you approach it like the kids approach video games, because they're ready for a challenge and they're ready for the next level, that's what we need to learn. Okay, any other questions, comments? I, I found out about a lot of meds, and I found out after I've learned for a while that there are certain meds you take only in the morning, meds you, meds you take with your Timing, food, yep. You know, so I was doing it all wrong. Yeah, so you food. need to have a good relationship with your physician and talk about timing of when you take these meds too. Absolutely right. Anything else? Did we hit the highlights? Is there anything you want to know about we didn't cover? You, you all were a good group, and thank you for participating. It's a whole lot more fun when people talk. And okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.